Hey my friends, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. If you are new, my name is Sammy, welcome. Today we are hopping into some more fall DIYs. I did a vote, you guys said fall, so let's go ahead and get into them. Now I know y'all have been waiting and here it is, a wood round. So this is an 18 inch wood round, it is one inch thick and I get mine from Home Depot. I already sanded it with an 80 grit and then 220 grit sandpaper, cleaned it off and now I'm using a microfiber cloth and early American stain by Verithane and I'm going to do the front the sides and the back. Then I'm gonna stick it out in the sunshine so that it dries super fast for me. I'm gonna take the design that I created on my Cricut. This SVG file is available on my website and it has already been posted for the membership group along with uh, I think three other Halloween wood round SVG files. So I'm gonna peel this back. Y'all, I haven't used my Cricut in so long that it was so off. <laughs> It was cutting through the paper, then it wasn't cutting at all. Oh my goodness, it was a mess. But after I peel my paper off, I am going to put this on the bottom half of my wood round. Now I made this SVG file a little bigger than the wood round so I can make sure I had full coverage. My main objective was to get that center triangle all the way onto the wood round. So once I get it where I want, I'm gonna go ahead and rub that down. I am using stencil vinyl from Oracle, and then this is Vinyl Ease Transfer Tape. Everything I use on my wood rounds is available on my Amazon store link located in my description box. So once we peel that back, I'm gonna tape the top off with some painter's tape. Because I wanna paint the bottom half, I do not wanna paint our top half. Then I'm going to mix a custom color. I am going to mix Summer Crush with Faded Burlap. Y'all, I need to bottle this stuff. If Debbie ain't gonna make it, I'm gonna bottle this up for myself. So I need to get some, some jars or something. This turned out to be the most beautiful terracotta color I've ever seen. So after mixing that, I'm gonna put it on to my plate. Y'all know how I do, and if you're new, I have tons and tons of wood round videos. Sorry, I just smacked my mouth right there. All right, now I'm gonna take my sponge roller and we are going to put two even coats of this paint color onto our wood round. After it is almost, no, completely dry, that is when I do the side of my wood round. You guys, do you see how beautiful this color is? This is it dried down. It's Gorga. Okay, so now I take the stencil vinyl off of the sides and I'm just gonna go back in with my sponge roller once again and I'm going to paint the sides. I do not paint the back, the back is stained and it's pretty. Now we are going to weed the rest of the wood round. The trick with this is you need a super sharp weeding tool. When I first started, I gouged the crap out of my wood because I was not using a sharp tool. I use the Cricut weeding tool and I love it. The Dollar Tree one is actually pretty darn good too. So once we are done with that, I'm going to remove my painter's tape and I'm going to take the Hey Y'all stencil and put it on the top. In the SVG file, I also put Hello Fall in case you wanted to go that route with it. Once I lay it down, like you guys, I was like, I'm not wasting that terracotta paint. So I grabbed like an ugly picture that I've painted twice and then this bunny and I covered them. I wasn't, I was not gonna waste it. All right, so now because I was lazy and I didn't wanna get another sponge roller out and another plate out, I just ended up stenciling the, um, the ah, crinoline on. Crinoline is a beautiful ivory color, but it doesn't have a yellow undertone, which is why I like it. it almost reminds me of like chiffon by Rust-Oleum. It is perfection. After that dries, we are going to peel that off. And do you guys see that wood round? <laughs> no blades whatsoever. Yes, it is absolute. <laughs> I love this wood round so much. Okay, so once I'm done with this, and you can see when you weed it, with the clay base paint, there is no, there are no like flakes that come off. Now we're gonna seal our wood round. I am using water-based 
sparurethane. This is varathane. It is, again, in my Amazon store link, or you could get it at hardware stores. You want to use spar urethane because it protects against the elements. So it's gonna protect against humidity, UV rays, and all of that good stuff. I do two coats on the front, no, two coats on the back, two coats in the front. If your wood round is gonna be directly in elements, meaning you don't have an overhang on your porch, then make sure you do a third coat of this on the front. Also make sure you get these sides of your wood rounds. If any drips on the side and you leave it to dry, there are going to be cloudy little drip balls hanging from there and we don't want drip balls. All right, so once this is all dried, we are going to add some accessories. I am going to triple knot this twine. I'm gonna flip my wood round over and I am going to line it up with that bottom design. You picking up what I'm putting down. Then I'm going to staple it. Now, I can say that you can pull the twine as hard as you can and wrap it around without hot gluing it. But if it's going to be in the elements, no matter how tight you pull that twine, it is going to eventually start sagging. So I decided to get my hot glue gun. This is the detailed one. And I put the littlest line of hot glue to keep this in place so that I don't have the chances of it sagging. I'm then going to hot glue the sides as well and bring that around the back and back to the front, always hot gluing my sides. I'm gonna do this about, I think, four times. I do it up until it gets to the bottom of my Y and then I am going to triple knot again and finish it off with the staple gun so it does not go anywhere. I also staple in the middle just for added security. Once we've completed that, you're gonna grab your D hooks. These hold up to 50 pounds. The screws come with it and we are gonna screw those in. I usually go three inches in, three inches down about that. Now I just eyeball it, but that's what I used to measure. <laughs> Once I am done with that, I am going to use the wired jute cord. You can most definitely use ribbon as well, but this has been my go-to for a while because I want the, um, the focus to be on the wood round, not the ribbon it's hanging from. And it, this, this has worked. So this is what I go with. And you just twist it on around and you're done. Now the fun part, accessorizing your wood round. I saw these picks at Hobby Lobby and I knew right away I wanted to make a wood round with them. I bent it up and then I'm going to pull some of those branches up and staple some of these smaller branches first. Then I am going to go ahead and staple the bigger part of this pick. Now my staple gun, the staples itself were not long enough so I had to hammer some of these in so that it would stick. I'm gonna cut the remainder of that pick off towards the end. I'm using wire cutters. Now I'm gonna get that second pick. I'm gonna see where I want that placed, cut the extra off. I'm gonna lay that back on my wood round and once again, I'm going to staple some of those smaller little branches first and then I do the larger pick. Now my bow, I wrapped my bow up two times, so it's gonna give me two loops. Then I'm going to cut some um, ribbon for a tail. That's what I'm doing right here. I go ahead and dovetail those. I do have a ribbon video that I do in real time. I will try and remember to link that in the description box. I'm also gonna cut a third piece, and this is gonna be our little cylinder, and this is gonna go on the top. Now we are going to take all of these pieces that we have, and we are gonna stack them on top of each other. I lied, we're gonna fold the main ribbon in half, cut some notches in it. Now we're gonna stack it all up on top of each other. I'm going to get a zip tie. You could get zip ties at Dollar Tree. Turn that bow on a round, and then I'm going to close it. Now, don't close it all the way yet. Fluff your bow out. Make sure it's centered, it's not all wonky. And then once you have gotten the perfect bow, that is when you tighten your zip tie. Now we are going to get that staple gun once again, and I staple on the tails of my bow, 
and then I'm going to staple on the top loops of my bow. I have the picks underneath the middle, so I cannot staple right there. And y'all, this wood round is gorgeous. John's like, so how much are you listing that one for? And he goes, never mind. I already know it's going on our front door. And I was like, I think so. I mean, everything about this, the color combo is absolutely beautiful. I don't even think this has to be specifically for fall, which is great. Love the fabric ribbon and the picks. I, it's, it's my favorite. Uh, I say that all the time, but like this one is amazing. And it was inspired by my sister-in-law, Shanda. Just checking in y'all. I hope you guys are feeling inspired by these fall DIYs. I know I have definitely been dreaming about fall, specifically fall weather. Uh, so this is helping. I'm also watching Practical Magic and Hocus Pocus while I'm doing these things because it's hot here in Kansas. So it, it's helping me get into the mood of fall. So I hope you guys are feeling the same way. I hope you guys are having fun with these DIYs. Remember, all of the paint products are down in the description box on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, as well as the Roy Cycle decoupage papers, my upcycles, which you guys, I have been so bad about putting the upcycles on there. I did list, I think, any ones that I have done up until this point. So go check those out. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. Thank you for always spending your time with me. And let's get back into the DIYs. Next two DIYs are going to be very easy. I am taking this free frame that I found on the side of the road. I'm going to take the flowers off and then it had like a wired hanger on the back. All I'm going to do is loosen that up so I could bring the wire up so it's not visible from the front anymore. I'm going to take, you guessed it, Summer Crush and I'm gonna go around the frame. I'm just doing a messy coat because I still want some of that gold peeking out through the Summer Crush color. After that completely dries, I'm going to top it off with some uh, Big Top, which is our hard clear coat. And you could also use clear wax as well, dark wax. This frame had some detail in it, so either way, it would look gorgeous. After it completely dries, I'm gonna take the white wax from DIY. And if y'all have not tried these waxes, seriously, they are so buttery smooth. I'm gonna wipe that wax back with a paper towel. And when you use Big Top, your wax is gonna wipe back a lot easier than when you do wax. So it's all in the details, it's perfection. Now I'm gonna take more picks. These are from Hobby Lobby as well. And you guys, when they're 50 to 40 off, these picks were like $3 each, I think and look at how full they are. So taking one of the wires from one of those flowers, cause it was thicker, I use that to twist up my main pick. I took off the pumpkin from the other one cause it was just too much. I'm going to find my placement for the second pick, kind of trying to hide the tail of the pick underneath. But before I do that, I'm gonna take one more wire and get some of the smaller little branches on that pick and I'm going to pull it really hard and then twist it so it is nice and tight. Now we're gonna get that other pick and I am going to kind of tuck it up underneath that pumpkin and its leaves. I'm gonna take another one of those like thicker wires from those flowers and I am going to also attach this one on. So the thicker wire I put like next to the thickest part of the pick, and then I get like that little like floral wire, and that's what I use to get the smaller branches as well. Once I have that where I want, I cut the excess of like the tail of the pick off, and then I feel like it's missing something on the bottom of that pumpkin. See like that gap? So I just took, some thin burlap ribbon, tied it in a super basic bow, and then hot glued it on. And nothing was hot glued to the frame itself. So if somebody wanted to redo this next fall, they totally could. But I love how this turned out. For an absolutely free frame on the side of the road, $6 in Hobby Lobby picks, this turned out pretty 
darn good. And I've seen these on Pinterest um, as door hangers, not only like inside home decor. So leave me a pumpkin down below if you like this one and you're gonna try it with an old frame that you have in your home. Look at how cute that is. All right, let's take a jello mold. So in order not to hurt the jello mold, because I know somebody in the comments is gonna scream at me, uh, we are going to save it. So what I did was I took some green floral foam, I made it big enough to where I could push it in there without having to hot glue. Then I'm taking a stick that I found outside, pushing that down in there as well, and then putting some hot glue in there and sticking it back down. Now I'm gonna take some Spanish moss. And again, I am just applying the hot glue to the floral foam, not the jello mold itself. So I'm gonna stick that down on there. And you guys, we're gonna do quite a few of these for fall because I have so many that need to be upcycled. I'm gonna grab these leaves from this Dollar Tree pick. The leaves on here totally remind me of pumpkins. So I am going to hot glue those. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom and I'm going to stick that down into the Spanish moss. I think I put two, four, I don't know how many, but we're gonna put more of those in there. Next, I'm gonna grab that wired berry stuff from Dollar Tree in the green and white and I twist it around some random thing put some hot glue on the bottom and I'm gonna stick those down into that floral foam. I also do another one on the opposite side and then I'm going to grab that, um, the wired twine as well and I'm gonna stick some of those in there. Now, of course we need a bow. I couldn't leave the front empty. So I just cut um, a ribbon I had in half, tied a very basic bow and I hot glued that to the front. This is, these are DIYs, you guys, except the wood round that you can finish in a day and look at how gorgeous that is. And y'all, that salvage wood is on my website available for purchase, so go hit that up. But the color of this bump pan, sorry, jello mold is so beautiful. I love how it came out. And like I said, we are gonna do more of these because I have tons of them and tons of different ideas on what to do with them. Thank you all for spending your time with me. I really hope you enjoyed this fall DIY video because I absolutely loved making it for you. Have a good one. Bye. I'm back. You guys, I don't know if I ever did an update on the IOD flannel. You know, which one? Well, my hair is covering it. How about that? This one that I made? Uh, I have washed it many a times and the ink is still there. So just remember to um, press it with some heat or like hot, put it on high in the dryer for like 30 minutes and you're good to go. Okay, now we should probably get back into the intro.